Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our February SBDM webinar. So today we're going to talk about alternative model applications, staffing allocation reminder, uh, SBDM coordinator trainer endorsement training, some election tips because election season is approaching, and the updated SBDM model policies. So per regulation, uh, councils can add additional voting members to their council so long as that model is approved by the Kentucky Board of Education through an alternative SBDM application. Until February 29th, a school can submit an application for an alternative SBDM model. Applications are not required for the addition of non-voting members or changes that maintain the proportions that are outlined in KRS 163.45. And you can find KDE guidance as well as the application at the bottom of the SBDM technical documents webpage. As a reminder, tentative staffing allocation should be sent to the school councils by March 1st with final allocation by May 1st. Uh, if you plan on revising the staffing allocation, please send the updated worksheet to us for approval. You can find the updated staffing allocation worksheet for use for the 24-25 school year under the SPDM staffing allocation heading on the SPDM technical documents webpage. Please allow some time for the KDE to review those allocations prior to May 1st. The SBDM office is planning and preparing for next year's SBDM training, and that includes the endorsement training for coordinators. We have three dates and times that are available for you all to attend. It's April 18th at 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, April 23rd at 1 p.m. Eastern, and then April 25th at 10 a.m. Eastern. The registration link was shared in the newsletter, uh, and after you register, you should receive an email with the link to the training immediately after registering. If you have not yet registered, at the end of our at the end of our meeting today, I'm going to put the registration link in the chat so you can register. All right, uh, election season is coming up, so over the next couple of months, we will be sharing some election tips. Uh, this month's election tips is for minority repre representation elections. So just as a reminder, any school with 8% or greater minority membership in their student population based on the superintendent's annual attendance report or the SAR report are required to have minority rep membership on their SPDM council. However, because the 2024 SAR minority membership report will not be released until August 20th, 24. Schools are encouraged to consult their infinite campus report from October 1st of 2023 to determine whether the school will require minority representation. So even today, right, you can pull up what your school membership was on October 2020, October 1st, 2023, and see if you will require minority representation for this upcoming school year. Now, a common question that I get asked is, when do we host the special elections for minority representation? So if your school statutorily requires minority representation, the first thing you're going to do is host your regular election. Um, you will not conduct your special election until after your regular election has concluded and not, no minority council member has been elected um, or, the count, or the principal is not a minority council member. And the reason is, is that if a minority council member is elected during that regular election, then no special election is needed because the statutory required minority requirement, it has been met by that election. So uh, the first thing you're going to do is host that special, I'm sorry, that regular election. And then if, and only if no minority members are elected and your principal is not a minority, then you would host a special election for minority representation.
And the last thing we're going to talk about are the updated SBDM model policies. Uh, so councils may have to modify their emergency um, emergency plan policy as well as adopt a portable automated defibrillator or an AED use policy. House Bill 331 requires the following to be added to the emergency action policy. So it needs to include procedures for a medical emergency and written cardiac emergency response plan. The plan must be provided to all staff and first responders, and the plan must be reviewed annually by the nurse. For the AED use policy, the policy must include information on training, maintenance, notification, and communication with local emergency medical service systems of a portable AED. And you can find these updated emergency plan policies as well as an AED policy within the SPDM handbook. A question that I have been getting is, do we have to have a separate AED plan? Um, no, so as long as everything that is required by the bill is within the, a lot of people have been incorporating it into their emergency uh, action policy. As long as everything is set, that everything that is required by statute is inside that emergency plan, um, that's fine. You just have to make sure that everything is covered. Um, that's what I have for today. Uh, thank you for attending. I'm going to be putting the attendance verification in the in the chat as well as the uh, registration for the endorsement training. I'm going to stick around. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful day.